last time when you came on the podcast, one of my questions was, you know, your whole brand and we mentioned brand before is, is quiet light. And I asked you, you know, what is that? And you just said, it's just because I'm a lazy photographer. Um, <laughs> which is a, 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 <laughs> a great response, by the way. Um, this time, you know, I took another quote from your website that I want to use here. And you say, light is the key to producing an image that can relay sense and a feeling. Uh, if somebody is unfamiliar with kind of producing an image with uh, a sense or a feeling, what do you mean by that? Oh, geez. It'd probably be easier if I could show some examples right now. Um, I think the thing is, is that with the the difficulty with light is that it, it it can conjure up all kinds of emotions, but different in every person. So I, I might look at an image and just think it's fantastic. And, you know, sometimes you, you'll, you might look at a painting or a piece of art and it can actually bring tears to your eyes because it, it, it kind of brings out some kind of emotion. Now that could be whether it might be light or it could just be the subject matter. But I think with, with light, uh, it really does, uh, it, it does conjure up certain emotions within us. And a lot of it has to do with how we feel at that time of the day or what's happening in our, in our lives. Uh, there's some times when you, you'll go out and uh, you might get some angry skies or something like that. And it just creates this energy that you've never experienced before. So I think light is, is definitely the key to good photography. And I, I guess the thing that I'm always trying to harp on about is you can pretty much photograph anything in any kind of light. It's just picking the right subject for that light. Like right now it's bright sunshine out here and it's really uninspiring. It's hot, it's midday, but if I really had the energy and the motivation, I'm sure I could find something in this light to photograph and actually get a decent photograph out of it. But you'd, ha but it'd have to be a subject that would go with this type of light. I remember um, last year, it was a bit of a nightmare actually. Uh, I had a client that I, that I took out to the Canadian Rockies and the weather was, it was the hottest, uh, the hottest week that we've had ever in Canada. It was just brutal um central british columbia there was uh, the town of lytton actually burnt down it went up to uh, 50 degrees celsius and uh banff and jasper it was just brutal it was just so hot and, and uninspiring and i was really struggling to where to go with this guy where to take him because the conditions were just horrible even in the early in the morning and in the evening it just was not great so we ended up uh, at uh, a place called Tuckercaw Falls, which is in Yoho National Park, this massive waterfall. And this was early summer, so the snows hadn't quite melted yet, but as soon as we had this, this heat wave, all of a sudden all the snow was melting all at once, so the, the falls was just raging. And I remember going to the falls, and below the falls is this quite a, a large forested area, but it was just getting pummeled by all the mist and the... Uh, 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 the water from this waterfall and it was just incredible and it was an incredible event to photograph but I just remember the light it was sunny but you'd have that sun coming through the fog and then these light beams so it created this really uh really uh invigorating uh, emotional response within just watching this this you know, this water come down on this forest and all these light beams. I mean, it was just, just incredible. So light definitely does play a part in, in how you feel about a scene and how you end up photographing it. Um, actually just yesterday, I don't know if any of you have seen, or uh, perhaps you should go over there after this, uh, Simon Baxter, who's a, a YouTuber, just put up a, a video about it, an exhibit that he's been doing with, uh, uh, another photographer, Joe Cornish. And Joe, uh, they talk about one of Joe's images on there. It's a, a, a beautiful twisted tree with this light just emanating behind it. And 
I had such an emotion towards that image, and that was just through video that I ended up buying a copy of the print because I just, for some reason, and I'm I'm guessing it's light, it just really resonated with me, and I just thought, man, I really want to hang that on my wall. Uh, so I ended up buying a print because I just thought the light was just so fantastic. I mean, th th there's more to it than just the light, but it was it was definitely the light that really drew me to the image. So um, I don't know if that answers your question, but <laughs> it's just kind of a bit drawn out there. I, I no, I, th I think it definitely does, and and I think from from me, if if I look at the photos that I've been able to sell and have had the good fortune to actually sell an image to somebody, since that's what we like to do as photographers, um, if I look at selling an image, the ones that I've sold, and I ask people, you know, what what drew you to this photo, what what made you enjoy it, it may not be light right off the bat like they may not say well you know the light because that's kind of photographer's lingo they'll say something like the scene reminded me of home or the way this looked reminded me of my childhood or something yeah, like sure. that like a memory that they've had lodged in their brain and light like you said has a ton to do with that the way it hits the trees the way it hits the canopy um and and I would be interested to hear, you know, some of the prints that you sell, have you had some of the similar responses, uh, maybe not saying light directly, but saying something like this scene tied me to a memory? Uh, not, not very often. I mean, if it does, they, they haven't really said so. Um, it always surprises me when it comes to selling prints, it always surprises me what people pick. Uh, they always pick stuff that I probably wouldn't have picked, but there must have been a reason why I, I have it on my website in the first place. You know, you it's usually that the images that I really like are the ones that nobody else likes because I've I felt like I've put a lot of myself in into them. And I think a lot all of us probably feel that we we put a lot of energy into a scene and uh, we think it's just absolutely fantastic. And we show it to people and they're just going to go, yeah, <laughs> you know, but I mean, as long as it's probably more to do with uh the uh the actual energy and the the emotion that you put into actually making the image rather than the photographs themselves perhaps that has something to do with it uh but i i haven't really come across many people that have have come up to me and said oh this really reminds me of my childhood or you know um yeah <laughs> i don't know have you yeah, all the time, um, which is a, a compliment to me. But I'm also selling a lot to people who also live in my area. And, you know, around where we live, a lot of times you stay put in the same county and you aren't really leaving very much. You know, you may go to a different town or a larger town, but you're not leaving the county too much. But like in, in terms of like, we've mentioned like the use of light, uh, for that sense and, and, and feeling for you when you're going out into the field and you're kind of, you know, boots on the ground, looking at the scene in front of you, how much weight do you put on light in terms of importance to the overall photograph? And, and when that we're talking, you know, light composition, uh, the lenses that you use, everything that goes involved. Uh, well, it's very important, uh, and it's usually um, the light that attracts me to the, the subject. I don't usually go out looking for a specific subject to photograph, uh, especially, I mean, lately I've been doing a lot of woodland photography uh, in old growth forests, and it's usually the light that I'll be drawn to. So we'll be walking through the forests, and all of a sudden you might see a glimmer of light on uh say a branch or some moss or something so I'll, I'll just head on over there and look at that and then that will be the kind of uh the central interest in my in my composition and i'll try and compose around whatever that light is doing rather than the actual subject itself um i know that um last few weeks I, i've been taking brian out to we went out to Carmana provincial park which is an old growth forest on the west coast of the island here and even on the cloudiest of days you can still find good light 
uh, by what we'd end up doing is if you go on the outskirts of a forest or if you're along the, the, the fringe line between where a forest ends and you might have a, a river there or something, you, you all of a sudden you have this, this area where there are no trees. So you'll still get this ambient light flooding in, even on the most miserable of days, if it could be pouring rain, you'll still get ambient light flooding in and it's still enough to light up subjects beautifully. So that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll go on the, the fringes of forests and look for light there and then just compose around that light, if that makes sense, rather than saying, well, I want to photograph that tree, but the light's over here. Uh, you know, if it's if it's a choice between some decent light over here and a gnarly tree, then I'll, I'll go for the, the decent light and forget about the gnarly tree until perhaps it gets some light on it. Uh, another example, Brian and I were walking down a trail and there was these uh, backlit uh, ferns. And again, it was just a miserable day, but the way they were positioned, uh, the ambient light just made them glow. So we ended up spending quite a bit of time just trying to find a composition in these ferns that that just looked like they were neon green because of that the light hitting them from behind, you know. So that's pretty much my approach to all photography is uh, I don't usually go out with a specific subject in mind. Uh, I'll just look for nuances in light. And they can be very subtle because the nice thing about subtle is that even if it's so subtle that it's hard to kind of see it, it uh, you know, the contrast, you can always bring that up in, in Photoshop or Lightroom, the dodging and burning, you know. I think it, a lot of it goes back to what we were talking about right before we went live here is, you know, some of the places that I can go, whereas it, we don't get the best sunrises and sunsets here. Um, but we do get great skies when it's very hazy overcast or uh, just sprinkling and you get that ambient light coming through the tree canopy and it subtly hits like a few trees or the rocks on the edge of a waterfall or maybe it breaks for a second and makes the tree canopy glow green um, you get a lot of that in and and i would echo what you said and that if i'm going out i'm looking for good lighting conditions over a great subject any day of the week because if the good lighting conditions aren't on the great subject it's really not going to be a great subject in the photograph you need that light coming in and hitting it just right uh and and i would even if i'm going to a location that's close by my house i'm going to make notes on where the great locations are that didn't have good light so i can go back when the right light might hit them uh just right and and that's obviously a gamble if the light's going to be there yeah for sure um i mean i i mean i like epic light as well um but i think we do put too much emphasis on those epic moments uh but they don't happen that often and they're only going to happen often if you put yourself in those places where they do happen often. I mean, there's a reason why a lot of people go down to Patagonia and places like that is because you get epic light. The, the, the light is always changing and it can be just incredible. I, I can't even remember the last time we had epic light where I live. Uh, I think one, uh, one day last year I, we were having a barbecue and we had some beautiful light in the clouds, but not very often, you know, <laughs> so, uh, and part of it is, like I said earlier, laziness, uh, getting up early. Uh, I mean, I love the light in early in the morning, but I don't want to get up at four o'clock every morning. And you have to do that. If you want to capture those moments when you get that, that incredible light, you're going to have to get up every day at that time and you just get burnt out. You just, I can't do it. So I, I spend most of my time on those days when the light is not epic and uh, the, the results are going to be more subtle. They're not going to be in your face. Um, they're not going to be uh, bangers on Instagram or, or anything like that, but I don't actually care because it's the, it's the, the finding of those, those compositions that I really enjoy. And uh, I just like showing my results to people. So, yeah. <laughs> how are make, how are people making, capturing light in a photo over complicated 
Well, it's funny. On the the other day, I had a, a comment on my YouTube channel, and I was talking about um, taking an image in Photoshop and using layers to um, paint in areas where you might get some wind movement. So, say you're, you're photographing a waterfall, and you want a specific shutter speed for the waterfall, but it's too slow for the foliage around it. So you need to capture it at a faster shutter speed to to get it sharp and all that stuff. And the guy said, "Well, you know, how can I? How I don't have any of these uh, programs. How can I take a good image without Photoshop or Lightroom?" And I thought, "Well, you can. I mean, people have been doing it for years and years with film before digital. Uh, what it boils down to is putting yourself." in a position where you have good light for that subject, uh, good composition, all of the basics for photography will garner a, 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 a good or great image. You don't need all of this digital stuff to, to make a great image. And I think the problem that we're facing right now is we, we put too much emphasis on post-processing and what we need to do with the image afterwards instead of actually putting our effort into coming away with a decent image uh, from right when you're there. And, that, and that's one of the reasons why I show my raw files is because I want to show people that, yes, sometimes I'll, I'll do quite a bit of work in Photoshop, but you, you don't, if you, if you put your effort into what you're doing behind your camera, you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have to, unless you want to do something specific like change the sky or or whatever. Then yeah, sure. But for just decent photography, you really don't need all that stuff. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't know. I think I think we we just uh, we concentrate way too much on on after the fact than actually when we're there. Well, yeah, I used to say. To people that I would take out on workshops all the time, you know, photography is 50, 50, 50% 50 in the field, 50 for 50% post-processing. And I've since adjusted those numbers into more of 75 in the field to even 80% in the field to 20 to 25% in post-processing. And I'm sure maybe as I continue to shoot over time, that'll continue to adjust heavier in the field, but it, it's true, you know, more often than not, if I'm spending more time in the field, looking at a subject, looking at the light, looking at the weather and waiting on that right moment, I get a way better photo than I could produce in post-processing, adding all of these tricks and tools and Photoshop, and I'm not dropping in any skies or anything like that, but just adjusting, you know, contrast here and there, some masking here and there. And if I do it in the field, it's way better. Yeah, and I think uh, I mean it's it's pretty evident to me that when people come out on a on a workshop or come out on a trip with you, the the joy in photography is actually just being out in the field. And a lot of these people they work with computers all day, like they're not doing photography for a living; they're just doing it as a hobby. They the last thing they want to do is spend hours on a computer fiddling with photographs. I mean, some people do, but the joy for most people, I would argue, is actually being out in the field and spending time uh, looking for photographs or actually being there and witnessing light or whatever, not spending time on the computer afterwards. Um, and then you've got to think to yourself, okay, well, now that I've done all this work on this this image, what am I going to do with it now? Like, what, you know, what, what, what do you do with it? I mean, I, I'm sure you're the same, but how many times have you heard someone, oh, I'm... I'm working on images that I, I took three years ago. What? I literally say it to myself every single day. See, I, I don't, I, I work on my images as soon as I get home. I'll put them through and then I'm done. I don't have any images that I need to process or process. <laughs> Cause I'm so excited to get them on the screen and show everybody. That's you know? good. I mean, photography should be exciting, right? And then I'll look at them and go, oh, why did I show that one? That was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me throw the offer out to people watching live. If you have any questions about light um, that we haven't gotten to, please feel free to submit those and I'll, I'll watch them coming in um, as I ask this. And, and 
Uh, one of the things that I've really learned from you, both in your videos and um, even in your presentation when we were in Kanab together, was your separation of subjects. And, and predominantly in trees and, and when you're photographing forests, and it reminded me as I was going through your gallery on your website right before we jumped on, uh, every single photo has this really nice separation of subjects and trees and their gaps and spaces in between them. And then you look, I look back at mine, which woodland photography is probably my, my least significant, least successful kind of, uh, photography. But I think what is the importance that you place on separation between subjects when you are crafting a composition and when you are working with the light in the field? Well, I think it it, um, it will really separate your image from, uh, you know, a, a, a mediocre image to something that's really, really good. You you really need not every photograph, but I would say the majority of photographs need some kind of contrast. And I work with the basis that you know, if if you have something light, uh, um, whether it be a tree or, or whatever, then you need it's nice to have something dark behind it and then something light, dark, light, dark. So that's creating that contrast and that three dimensionality. I think the problem that we all have, and I still, I still make the, the same mistake now is we go out in the field and because, because we're looking at something that's three dimensional, uh, we forget that the camera just doesn't see it that way. It, it, to really show that depth, you really need light. And if you don't have the light, then what you're seeing is not going to translate uh, into a photograph because it, it just looks flat and everything blends into one another. So it's a, a conscious thing that I'm always try, try to be aware of is how does my subject or relate to what's happening in the background? And I think that's one of the things we forget a lot in photography is, is looking at what's going on in the background and what's happening behind your subject not just the subject itself because that plays a huge role in in whether a, an image will be successful or not uh and it can be you know sometimes you can spend way too much time uh composing a photograph and to the point where it gets a little bit stagnant and it looks uh, it doesn't it's just everything's too perfect so it's nice to throw in uh, a couple of things that perhaps uh knock it out of kilter a little bit so that um it doesn't look so static and 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 dull, um, but I think I think contrast is and and separation is a well, it's a huge uh, important thing for me for sure. And even you know stupid little things like um, with trees, especially you might have one tree in the foreground here, and then you'll have another one in the background, but the, the branches are, are overlapping. And if you just move your camera a little bit so they're not overlapping, it's just enough to to uh, so people can see that oh yeah those two entities are separate are separated from one another just little things like that you know